Michigan Wolverines face the Indiana Hoosiers. Hello again, everyone. Welcome to what we hope will be a terrific Tuesday. The Wolverines are 10 and 3. The Hoosiers 13 and 2, but the Hoosiers are 4 and 0 in conference, while the Wolverines are just 2 and 2. Indiana's won 11 straight, and Michigan has not won in Indiana in the past four years. Jim Valvano, very interesting note here. Michigan, what a great run they had to start the season. Almost knocked off Duke. That was their one loss in non-conference. Then they go into the Big Ten. They have losses to Minnesota. They have a loss to Purdue. And these young men are finding out in a hurry it's not so easy in the Big Ten. And, John, the continuing education of the Michigan freshmen will continue tonight where... Tip things off in the Big Ten. The Michigan Wolverines and the Indiana Hoosiers are standing by. Mike Patrick and Nick Vitale will be there momentarily. College basketball like me, you must get a timeout, baby! That's the name of my new home. They've done it with tenacious defense. Tonight, 16th ranked Michigan enters Assembly Hall with every intent of cooling off fourth ranked Indiana. It's another sellout crowd of over 17,000 here at Assembly Hall to watch their fourth ranked Hoosiers against the Wolverines. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mike Patrick, and it's great to have you with us. Michigan, behind its fabulous freshmen, are 10 and 3, ranked 16th in the country. But the Big Ten season has been an eye-opener. They've had to play three of their first four on the road, and they are only 2-2. Two and two. Indiana, on the other hand, is on an 11-game win streak. And during that stretch, they've beaten some outstanding teams, and they've hammered most of them. In short, no one is playing better basketball in the country than Indiana. For more, here's Dick Vitale. Thanks a lot, Mike. Hey, when you think of that Indiana right now in their 11-game winning streak, the offensive execution has been brilliant, averaging better than 90 points a game, getting great team balance, five guys scoring in double figures, shooting better than 50%. But number one, the real key to Indiana and their success, it starts with tremendous pressure defense. The architect of the defense, Robert Montgomery Knight, has a basic philosophy. There are four principles to his defense. Number one, it starts with pressure on the basketball, pressuring the ball is the key to relentless pressure. There's Damon Bailey applying the pressure on Jimmy Jackson. The second phase is denial. Ball, you man. Watch Chris Reynolds, number 21. Look how he beats Jimmy Jackson to the basketball. He denies him the basketball. And the third phase is to beat the cutter to the basketball. Watch Graham right now as he beats Jackson. He stays between Jackson and the basketball. And the fourth phase is blocking out. Indiana does a great job of blocking out. Look at Anderson. Screens out his man they come down with the rebound the key to indiana is great team defense all great clubs in any sport have a foundation that leads to winning that starts with defense well tonight michigan's fabulous five the freshmen will really be tested it'll be evaluation time here in bloomington indiana can they handle the indiana defense back to you mike all right, Dick, it should be a good one. And we'll be back with the starting lineups for both ball clubs in just a moment. ESPN's presentation of NCAA basketball, Michigan versus Indiana, is brought to you by Cadillac and your local Cadillac dealer. Discover how substance is taking shape, Cadillac style, by the people of Nike, who encourage you to just do it. And by Mr. Goodranch and your participating GM dealer, keeping quality on the road. Assembly Hall in Bloomington, Indiana, packed to the rafters for another Big Ten showdown. Take a look at the starting lineup for Michigan. Long on talent, short on experience. The best of the crop, Jalen Rose, averaging nearly 20 points a game. He's led the Wolverines in scoring eight games in a row. Steve Fisher, in his third full season as Michigan's head coach, he's won two-thirds of his game and made his mark with the best recruiting class ever. For Indiana, balanced scoring with Chris Reynolds as the distributor. He has an incredible mark of 68 assists and a mere 19 turnovers from the point. And Bob Knight in his 21st year in Bloomington averaged about 23 wins a year and a Hall of Fame inductee this year. Calbert Chaney Dick has picked up his game at this point in the season. At 26 against Northwestern, they said he really played well. He has to be the man down the stretch when it gets the crunch time against good competition to make the big play. A 
lot of pressure on these Michigan freshmen coming into this building. And Indiana controls the opening tip with Damon Bailey. He gives it up to run. These Michigan freshmen are going to see more picks in the first half tonight than they saw in four years of high school basketball. Handling the screen is really a difficult matter for young people. Bailey with a screen from Cheney. That's what I meant. There's the first one. Cheney lays that good screen. Bailey has really learned how to use the screen. Jalen Rose, the freshman out of Detroit running this club. They have not protected the ball well this year, Dick. Another phase right here that's big with young people. Movement without the basketball. Reynolds on the break, waits for help. What an education they're going to get right now on how to play against the screener. Anderson was open, didn't want the shot from 22. They play off Reynolds, not a threat offensively from deep. Anderson draws the foul. They do that so well. They clear out the side, get a little isolation, get a little one-on-one. -on -one. Jawan Howard picks up the personal. Eric, Eric Anderson drew the contact. Chris Reynolds given a lot of help defensively. That's another principle in their defense. Help defensively. Notice when the ball went to the baseline, he immediately left his man and gave help. Reynolds, a kid who was going to be redshirted this year, and all at once he has turned out to be a very important cog in this ball club. I was teasing Bobby Knight before the game. I said, why don't I get credit for telling you flat out in the UCLA game that you can't redshirt Chris Reynolds? Anderson, excellent free throw shooter, hits them both. 4 nothing Indiana. You're becoming more aggressive with the general, aren't you? I'll tell you one thing. The team is shooting better than 74% as a team from the free throw line. Tally. One of the problems with Michigan, lack of really good point guard play. Tally's got the mentality of a scorer. There he is shooting the best. Tally for three, and he hits it. The young man averaging 7.9 points a game. He already has three, and so does Michigan. He had a big game against Iowa. Gave him a big performance. A very stoic Mr. Knight. Cheney over Vosco. Doesn't get the roll. Weber lost the rebound to Reynolds. Anderson. Weber rips this one down. He had 16 rebounds against Illinois. Three on two, tough pass, great catch, and Jawan Howard with the layup. Jawan Howard, one of the diaper dandies, went out of Chicago, the trail man. Excellent look by Talley. Well, it was a tough pass, Dick. Bailey drives, kicks it back to Reynolds for three. I'll tell you, if he can make his perimeter shot, he becomes a really special player. One of the real premier defenders in college basketball. Until that one, he had only been one of ten from three-point range this year. Reynolds matched up with Rose. Rose has the size advantage. But Reynolds is a tenacious defender. Weber way out high to help. And they try to post up Reynolds. Gets help from Bailey. Lost it on the way up. Nover can't save it. Rose has it. Anderson got a piece, and Weber with a huge ball. He is really a quick jumper. He has that quick bounce off the floor. Great hands. Excellent offensive rebound. Tied at 7, 17, 16 to go first half. Very important for Michigan to play them tough in this first half to go in at halftime with some confidence. They're going to let Reynolds shoot all day. See, Tally says, you made one, try another. Can't let Bailey shoot all day. He buried the three. He's really been playing exceptional basketball the last six games, averaging better than 16 points a game since being inserted into the starting lineup. Watched him in practice. He hit a couple of three-point shots. The net didn't even move. They were so perfect. Good inside defense by Indiana. The Hoosiers lead by three and back again. Nover, nice drive, got the lay in. They're getting too many easy shots, Mike. They're getting any kind of shot they want. Wide open drives to the goal. Something Steve Fisher said earlier today, we can't give them the easy shots. Anderson going for the steal, got it away from Howard. That's just hustle. He out hustled him to the basketball. And they love it here in Bloomington. The Hoosier hysteric. Say, we're number one, baby. 14 7. Indiana has scored the last seven unanswered. Chris Weber does not move well without the ball. He has a tendency to stand. If there's two areas he has to work on his game, he's getting more involved in terms of movement 
And he also has to really work on a free throw line. He's one for 12 in the Big Ten on a free throw line. Anderson gets called for the hole. Non shooting foul. First team foul against Michigan. And a reach in on Calvert Cheney. That's his first, the second team. And Bob Knight up staring at the officials after that call. Timeout on the court. It's a seven point Indiana lead. Easy baskets, and we have had difficulties in two of our last three games keeping people away from second and third shots. We cannot give Indiana second and third shots. Second, you can't give them conversion baskets. Uh, you have to run the floor and convert from offense to defense. And third, you have to have some poise with the basketball. So far, there has been precious little of what Steve Fisher wanted out of his club tonight. Well, you know, peaks and valleys with such a young, talented team. They'll have moments where they'll be brilliant and moments where they'll look and they'll really struggle. They've hit three out of five field goals, but Indiana has made five of seven so far. Make no mistake, they're very talented people, Rose, Weber, and company. And Ray Jackson, number 21, is in for the first time. Bosco for three. He's got the range. Well, good kick out. Inside, outside action. Ball goes down inside to Weber, and he finds Bosco, who is a good long-range shooter. He went to Europe with the Big Ten team this summer, and it really helped him. I almost think he'd have to zone against Indiana, and if they're going to beat you, let him beat you from the perimeter. Of course, Steve Fisher told us today that they had worked on the, what, about 10 minutes on his own? He said, we have no zone. We were playing a man-to-man. -man. Pressure on Bailey. Nover, nice pass inside. Jump hook, got it. Nover's really playing well early in this game. I think he knows Henderson is back from, <laughs> the, from the sick man, and he wants some PT, baby. See, Weber number four right now is very easy to defend because he's standing. See him out in the corner out here? Nova has no problem playing number four, superstar. Tally for three, can't get it. Jackson with a rebound. His follow partially blocked. Jackson got it back again, blocked by Nova. Here comes Cheney, two on three, and he waits for help. Easiest guy to defend is the guy that doesn't move without the basketball. Indiana kids move without it. Three-point shot, Reynolds couldn't hit it. Weber outlet to Tally. That was a great pass by Weber. That could have been a three-point play there. It isn't Reynolds will pick up the personal. Weber really has an excellent outlet pass. I'll let a guy, Mr. Wes Unsel, years ago when he started at Louisville. I think, as we talked about earlier, moving without the basketball becomes a problem for young people. Watch number four. See how he's stationary right here? Very easy to defend somebody that just drifts and floats on a perimeter. See, right now, Nova has no problem playing him. He's not using any screens, and he's not flashing to the ball hard. In fact, Steve Fisher talked about that today with us at lunchtime. Tally hits the free throw, which is a pleasant surprise for Michigan fans. In Big Ten games, they're shooting 55% for the year a very poor 63 that's overall you can't do that you'll lose a lot of games shooting 63 percent from the line it's tough to win close games shooting like that but what a real test these young people have had this is their fifth game of the big 10 four on the road they've won two the only real slip they've had was the loss at home to purdue they were out rebounded in that game 40 to 20. cheney off the screen buried it simple curl move right off the screen 18 12. And Howard walked, yes. Third turnover so far from Michigan. Watch Cheney right now as he's going to go down and pop out for the little jump shot. He's going to run his man right into the screen. There's the little screen, the little curl move, squares his body. What impresses me, the way the Indiana kids have now learned how to use the screen. Here comes Michigan on the run. Tally pulls up, hits the jumper. I tell you, he can score. I really believe he's just got to play with a little bit more freedom to his game and not worry. He was a big-time player in high school out of Cooley High School in Detroit. They won three state championships in a row. He has seven so far, and the lead is cut to four. It's not that the Michigan youngsters can't play defense. They certainly have the physical skills to do it, but they don't have the experience. Dick, you know as well as anybody, in high school, superstars don't play much defense. Exactly. Many of these guys have a tendency to play in zone environments. 
Talley tried the tough pass again, and Jackson couldn't come up with it. Would have been an easy layup if he'd have had the handle. Coming up to Edberg, two guys you would expect to be in there in the other one. I guess he was practicing in my backyard today. My wife told me I couldn't believe it. I wish I was home. Peter Sampras using my court. Bailey for three. Not this time, and Weber rips down another one. Is he a big time rebound? He gets great position and is quick to the basketball. Tally is on a run. He has nine points, and it's a two point lead for Indiana. Indiana doing a very poor job stopping the basketball. You must turn and find the ball defensively. Meeks in for the first time, air ball on the three pointer, and a foul after it. And Meeks was the guy who reached in and picked up the person. Bobby Knight was so complimentary about his team and their performance against Northwestern. Tonight he said, we really played an outstanding basketball game. I couldn't find anything to be critical about. And usually he can find something, even if it's just to use for a teaching tool. I'll tell you one thing he did, Mike. The day after the Ohio State game, I got a phone call, and he said, I have to admit it. I was stubborn. I should have called a timeout. I couldn't believe it. I thought he was going to call a blitz me. Henderson, number 44 in the Indiana lineup. He missed the Ohio State game with strep throat. He's become a very vital cog in this team. Off the foot of Jawan Howard, the fifth turnover for Michigan. What Indiana gets from Henderson is a rebounder and a shot blocker. He's got very good quickness, and he's a very agile, mobile player, number 44. Henderson kicks it back to Bailey. Damon Bailey, good penetration. That's the dribble penetration we were talking about against Ohio State. Find the seam in the defense, attack the defense. And that's one of the reasons they go to the free throw line a great deal. Look at his strength. Greg Graham with a steal and the foul immediately on Rose. Intentional. And they will call intentional because he had no thoughts of going for the basket. Or two going for the ball. He was just trying to stop it. That means two shots and possession of the basketball. Greg Graham against Rose, right, right here, he reaches out with the right hand. Many a times they'll call that a foul. Now he's going to grab. Well, I guess he got the intention a little bit early. I did not see it. So yeah. Graham, who's a 76% free throw shooter, will get a pair, and then Indiana will get the ball back. You know, it's amazing when you think about this young man. He's been playing so well. He leads them in minutes played, and he comes off the bench. Played 398 minutes coming into this game. Missed that one. They will get another. Jalen Rose is going to grab the jersey after he gets stripped. Oh, yeah, yeah, there it is. There it is. Oh, he's holding it from the back. There's a great angle. Teddy foul. It's right direct there. And the intentional foul by rule has nothing to do with the severity of the contact. It's the intent. Just being deliberate. Wide gap. See the open gaps in the middle of that court. They flash somebody right in the middle. Wide open. See the curl by Bailey? Indiana really hasn't had to work very hard for a shot tonight. Away from the ball, Jalen Rose will pick up his second personal. We've got a timeout with 11.44 to go first half. Indiana up by five. No automobile. 10.44 to go in the first half. Mike Patrick, Dick Vitale with you. Indiana on an 11-game win streak. Their defense against their opponents during this skein has been incredible. They're out rebounding by nearly 10, and they are, look at that, 89 to 59 in points. I mean, they're just clobbering people. That's 29.3. That's an unbelievable margin in an 11-game streak, and that's against some really quality basketball teams. Non-shooting foul was the second on Jalen Rose. Michigan's playing a lot of zone principles up on top and that they're playing man-to-man, -man, but they're playing soft, trying to jam in the lane. Henderson forced one-headed block by Jackson. Anderson's got it back. Jackson's a really good athlete. Doesn't get the publicity the other freshmen get. Graham had to adjust his shot. Weber with a rebound. Now, here's where Weber's got to assert himself offensively. He's so talented. Dick, he's only touched the ball once on offense. Well, they got to help him out a little bit by laying some screens in their offense to get him free. See how easy he is to defend? Just stand at number four, try to get rebounding position. Riley with a turnaround jumper in for the first time and scores immediately to cut it to three. Riley's an experienced player. Last year, a double-figure scorer started this year coming off the bench because of the presence of Jawan Howard. See, they're almost like zoning inside. Watch a lot of man-to-man. 
pressure when they try to deny, but a lot of zone principles in their help. See, Riley tried to zone, now he has to come out and honor Anderson, he's too good a shooter. Indiana just wears hell. They make you play so hard on defense. Well, they're very difficult to play on. Yeah. Third and fourth pass. They break you down eventually. You can play the first two passes, but eventually a screen here and a screen there pops a guy wide open like they did there for Graham. Graham has three, the lead back to five. Graham's been such a positive player. They're gonna try a little screen and roll. See, see Chris right now, nobody lays any screens. He's out here on the perimeter looking for a shot. That's a walk. And he walked. Tally is out of there right now for the Wolverines. Came he so had nine points. That's the seventh turnover. Came so easy for Weber on a high school level. He just outmuscled people. He had the great agility. Detroit Country Day, he was such a dominant player. And that's a great school academically, one of the premier schools in America as we look at Michael Talley. Little shake of the head as he's seen his club drop behind by five again as we hit the 10 minute mark. Nice screen right there for Anderson. See how he floats out after the screen. Missed that one. Weber with a rebound. Henderson with the foul. Weber's an excellent shot blocker as well as a dynamic rebounder. Comes from a great, great family as well. He's had a tremendous bring it up. Michigan's at that stage where they're gonna really drive Steve Fisher crazy. They're gonna look so sensational one night and then another night struggle. Sure. Riley had Bosco down low and missed him. Here's where Weber gets the ball where he didn't want it. Threw that one away. Look at the speed on Graham. Weber chasing him and fouled him. Weber did reach out and got a piece of the ball, and now he's gonna go over and tell Graham he didn't mean anything by it. It's a good defensive play by Chris Weber. Chris Weber's a classy kid. He might be a little bit too unselfish and a little too passive. I think so, Dick. I really believe that. Now watch Weber trying to make the pass. Indiana with their anticipation defensively. Graham comes loose with the basket. Now he's going to foot race it, beat him to the basket, tries to cut him off, and here's the foul. Graham now two out of three from the line. What a big time player Graham has become. Last three games, he's averaging nearly 17 points. Well, Mike, two years ago, everybody was singing the acclaim of the Indiana freshman class. They thought that was maybe the best class in right. many, many a year. Lawrence Funderburk was part of this class, and Chris right. Lawson. Funderburk, by the way, had a great start the other day at 13 rebounds and 12 points, and that went over Iowa. Free throw good again, and Indiana back up by seven once more. It's been a game of streaks. Nine and a half minutes to go, first half of play. See, Graham did an excellent job right there of stopping the penetration of the basketball by Talley. King working outside, Talley back in. They need his offense right now. He has half their points so far. Excellent ball reversal by Michigan, swinging the ball. Jackson to Riley, lost it on the way up. Bailey knocks it away, and Henderson comes up with it. Well, Riley's 6'11", but he made himself about 5'5 five five by bringing the basketball down. Nine first-half turnovers by the Wolverines. Bailey, Henderson. He's a big-time player. Henderson is one of your diaper-dandy impact players from out of Indianapolis, Indiana. Over 1,200 on his SATs. Weber trying to take something on his own. Offensive foul. And he got an official in the process. A little HDT, a little hot dog time right there. He tried to put it in one hand. He's got the big paw. They rotate over and take the charge. Here's Weber. He says, hey, if nobody's going to get me the ball, I'm going to take it one-on-one -on -one to the basket. Well, I think that comes out of frustration, a play like that, Dick. I mean, he doesn't get the ball unless he's out at the top of the circle trying to make it happen on his own. But well, what a job by Indiana defensively. They really converged to the basketball to close off the driving angle. Steve Fisher takes Weber out of the ball game and talking to him. Most dangerous guy is the guy that lays the screen. You watch the screener, he'll pop right back out after he lays the screen. Bailey's playing so much better. He's asserting himself much more aggressive on the offensive end than earlier this year. Henderson double teamed down low, missed the shot. He'll draw the foul. It will be on Jawan Howard. Henderson had a struck throat, missed that game against Ohio State. Played part time in the next game. There's a look at Chris Weber. He's going to have a brilliant career at Michigan, but he's going to go a little up and down. As Henderson now with his agility on the baseline, a little pump fake. 
He was dominated in a high school state championship game against Glenn Robinson, who's sitting out this year at Purdue. And a lot of people said that game brought him down a little bit and developed a lot of work ethic on his part to prove that he is a legitimate big-time player because people start questioning and started to say maybe he's a little too soft. Michigan has Rose and Weber on the bench with two personal fouls each. Those are their two leading scorers, averaging about 35 points a game between them. Steve Fisher has to be concerned about a little spurt. Nice backdoor play. Oh, nice play. Jackson on the bounce pass from Talley. Is that cut back to seven? Is that athletic ability? I mean, the ballerina hanging on the basket from out of Texas, Jackson. Talley's play has kept Michigan in this game so far. He's really played well. He played well against Iowa as well. Anderson lost it on the way up. Somehow got it back. Triple team forced Anderson. Jump hook won't go. Henderson. Bailey kept it alive and finally the rebound to Howard. Good effort by Anderson and Henderson and Bailey. Bailey's playing with a lot more confidence now with the basketball. Three point shot, King with a miss. Jackson rebound, Tally for three. Tipped in, oh that's a beautiful play by Riley. Was it Riley or was it Henderson? I think Riley got it. Riley gets credit for it, but I thought possibly Henderson got a piece of that. 27-22. They gotta look for Cheney a little bit more. They gotta find Calvert Cheney. He's not getting enough shots right now. Anderson around a double screen and fighting through it. Jackson, he'll pick up a person. Jackson says, I never seen screens like that, a little double screen. In high school, they didn't give me those kind of screens. Now in the bonus situation. Michigan had that real disaster performance rebounded against Purdue. 40 to 20 to out rebounded. Then he came back against Illinois and out rebounded Illinois 40 to 20. Bailey 82.1%. Well, Bailey and Anderson got the message after the Kentucky game, and so did Cheney. He yeah. put him on the bench. And Anderson said, heck, I realized after sitting three games that I better practice with tremendous intensity or my senior year is going to be by me. And that's the message he sends, Mr. Knight. How you practice will determine whether you play. 7.02 to go and a half. Indiana by seven. Right here. We're going to see him float through the defense to this angle here. And we're going to watch Weber as he really doesn't move well enough. Freeze it. See, right here's Weber, and here's the screen. But now he's got to use that screen and peel to the basketball. But he just drifts, and he allows the defensive player to slide right through and play him. Henderson, now he'll give the ball up, and he's going to try to flash to the baseline. Watch number four, but he doesn't cut aggressively and hard. It's a very soft cut. He has to work on learning how to cut, how to flash to the basketball, run V cuts, horizontal cuts. 29-22. Tally, who has been the offensive force for this club, gives it up to King. And a foul underneath will be on Henderson as Jackson got it back. Two on Henderson. Jackson and King are really outstanding athletes. They really have the tremendous quickness and jumping ability. There's the great there. Know a heck of a lot more about basketball than I do. We've been trying to think all day. Can you think of, I even asked Bobby Knight tonight, two kids that come to a major program, a winning program like Michigan, and their number one and two options are freshmen and have produced like this? I can't think of it. Someone said Magic Johnson and Jay Vincent, but they had Greg Kelso, who was right. their leading scorer. I can't think of two kids in a top 20 program, top two players are freshmen. No, I couldn't either. Going back a long way to the point where freshmen were eligible. Graham, Cheney, Henderson, Anderson, and Bailey for Indiana. See how Michigan's played a little bit soft up on top, almost give it a look of the zone, even though they're playing man-to-man. -man. Jackson blocking foul, that will be two on him. Indiana really likes the defenses to extend. They like to have people come out and try to pressure the basketball, which leads to a lot of easy layups. He looks very passive tonight himself, the general. Coming up next, number San Antonio with the Spurs. No shock about Desmond Howard. He has his degree already. He's graduated from college. Larry Brown, I can't get that so proper. Yesterday he was fired, then he was rehired. Today he's fired. What happens tomorrow? I don't think he'll be rehired. 31-24. <laughs> I don't think he'll starve. No. 
Probably not. And there'll be a lot of people after him because the guy can flat out coach. Riley after a nice entry pass from King. That was great execution. Got the good what we talked about all the time, the 45 degree angle. I like Jimmy King. Very active player, good quickness. As well as Indiana is playing, they're not getting much space between them and Michigan. See, there's Cheney posting really well. Fall away jumper, he's fouled. Jackson just kept pushing and picked up his third personal. Not a smart foul there. Good execution by Indiana. They recognize that Cheney is really the guy they want to go to. He sits down in a box inside. They get him the ball on the box. There's the little head fake, and that causes the contact and the foul. See, great position. The key offensively is to get good position. Now watch Cheney, he's going to slide inside, and now he's going to sit. He's going to sit to the baseline. You're at his mercy if he can catch the ball in that deep. They had that great class we talked about. If you add Thunderbolt to this club and you talk about Chris Lawson, that's a great, great class. Then you look at North Carolina with their class, but they're minus Rozier. The key with Michigan is whether or not they keep this class together as we look at the free throws. Indiana, as usual, having the better of it, not in terms of percentage, but in opportunities. It's amazing the number of times they go to the free throw line versus the opponent. And that's because of their dribble penetration, their cutting, their slashing, and their screening. Michigan's getting better spacing right now offensively. Howard, a little jump hook, nice touch. 33-28. Came out of Chicago Vocational Tech. He was the first big name they signed in the early signing period. Then King and Jackson signed. Howard has four, the lead once again cut to five. Michigan's hanging right in there. I mean, yes, they are. Playing a control basketball game, playing with a little poise. Cheney for three. Anderson tried to keep it alive and will be called for the rebound over the top. Two on Eric Anderson. Right now, they're doing it without Weber and Rose as well. Weber and Rose is sitting next to Steve Fisher. And I think the message he's sending, I got to let the most productive guys play on the floor, and not guys because they have great high school reputations. Chris Reynolds will come back in for Indiana. Right after Howard signed early, then everybody started to speculate that maybe Weber will join the class. But Weber was really in a battle with Michigan State, and some said an outside shot, possibly Minnesota. And then he made that visit to Duke. And I know Steve Fisher. I was in the locker room when he found out that he visited Duke, and he was nervous. I mean, he was shaking. And I didn't help matters. I said, hey, Steve, once he sees Cameron and Gordon, that's a good offensive rebound. Jimmy King with the follow. It is a two-point game. Good, Here's pressure. Good call right there. Catching him a little bit. Graham may have gotten away with a walk. Here's Nover to the baseline. Triple team and foul. They hit Jackson again. They really received the spark off the bench from Jackson and King with their athletic ability. Both kids out of Texas. Indiana has hit only one field goal in the last five and a half minutes, but many games, look at that. I mean, that's an incredible stat that they have made more than the other teams they've played have even shot. They made 333 versus the teams against them shooting 240. That's just an incredible number. That makes up for the lack of using the three-point shot. Indiana, 12 out of 14 is a team from the line. Nova misses there. Michigan has made all of its tries, but they've only had five. I Tell you something else Michigan's done. They've done an excellent job of keeping this crowd really quiet. Nover, an excellent free throw shooter, misses them both, and then Tally goes head-to-head -head with Jimmy King and knocks it out of bounds out to the Hoosiers. Well, those are the kind of things that can come and haunt you. You don't let a good basketball team get second and third opportunities. See, right now, Indiana's got to start to assert themselves, and they got to look for Anderson a little more and Cheney. Cheney's going to slide inside. Graham has got that real quick first step. Nover got it. Nover wide open, but he's really the fifth option. If you're Michigan, you're saying, go ahead, Matt Nover, shoot the ball. 35-31, Tally bursts down the lane. Tried to keep it alive, and Cheney has the rebound. Watch the spurt right now. Here's Indiana in transition. Reynolds, good job defensively by Michigan in transition to stop the running game. Cheney with a pull-up jump. Too easy. 12-footer, good look at the basket. Cheney has eight, and the lead is back to six. 
So Michigan can challenge, but they can't get it over the top. Rose back in, tried for the rebound, and will commit, I believe, his third personal foul. Jalen trying to do it all by himself. Not really a heady play by Jalen. A little one-on-one -on -one maneuver, trying to put the ball to the deck, a little frustrating. He's going to beat Graham by himself. Now there's the little jumper, and now he's going to attack the glass and make the contact right over the top. He's not shown it tonight, but this kid will be a great player. Oh, did he show it against Iowa at oh, 34? Yeah. He was marvelous. And I mean, we're talking a game where every point was just so big. Rose will have to sit down, and Vosco will come back in, the senior out of Grand Rapids. Southwestern High School won two state championships in a row his last two years. Under Perry Watson, who's sitting at the sideline as an assistant coach now with Michigan. Really rose on target to break the Michigan freshman scoring record that Mike McGee set about uh, 14, 15 years ago. McGee was one of the big time scorers in the Big Ten. I believe he was second in all time in the Big Ten in score. Anderson hits the free throw, 39-31. Indiana by eight. Anderson has half a dozen. That's Perry Watson. Did a great job at Southwestern High School. Really responsible, I really believe, for Weber and Rose wearing a Michigan uniform. Long shot by King. Rebound to Nover. Reynolds really pushes the ball up the floor. Anderson, too good a shooter. Only getting one shot. Michigan's really allowing only one shot. Tally with great speed. Good save by King, but he missed the shot. Got his own rebound. And they just can't follow. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yeah! Jack City! Dixie Dude! off the steal, off the defensive play. Nover away from the ball will be called for his first personal. Four teams that I really like right now. I like UCLA's athletic ability. They're not playing selfish. They play very unselfish. Last year they were a selfish team. Certainly we've been given his due. I also like Arkansas. I think that Arkansas is going to be dynamite now that they have Todd Day back. And I like this Indiana team. Those are my four midseason teams for the Final Four. You saw Weber come back in the ballgame operating with two fouls. That's Henderson. Indiana has a nine point advantage from the free throw line. They lead by 10 overall, and that's been the story of their season so far. Howard hits the free throw. He'll get another on the bonus. Michigan. Juwan Howard was six so far. Dude. Michigan really had a great class. They called it the Fabulous Five in 1982 when they brought in all those kids, Wade and Henderson and Relaford and Roy Tarpley. And now here's another stage here in the 90s. But in, on paper, this has got to be the best recruiting class anybody's ever had. I agree with you, Mike. I agree with Bob Gibbons. Four of their 12 players rated in the top 12 in America. We took a look at Dan Dockage on the sideline, the guy that guarded Mr. Michael Jordan. Hits them both, and with 3.12 to go in the half, we have a timeout. Indiana leading 41-33. Indiana with another run has gotten the lead back up to eight points with three minutes and 12 seconds to go first half. And coming up at halftime, we will be going back to our studios, John Saunders and Jim Balvano. Jim will be talking about concentration, something I tend to lose every now and then, and scores highlights and analysis coming up from all across the country. Speaking of concentration, one of the great football players in the history of the National Football League, Roger Staubach. He played basketball as well, played several years down at the Naval Academy, and I got an invitation to play him in basketball in Dallas. He says, come to my home and play some hoops. Roger well, that'll Staubach. be a quick game. I want to run and get his autograph. Hey, who's that? Is that Valvano? Is that Valvano? I thought he was in the studio. You've got to take one of those guys with you when you play Roger. Keep <laughs> it under 50. Oh, look at Michigan right now. Look at Michigan showing the zone. Showing the zone. Two, three zone. We're in the middle of it. It's like a 2-1-2 two, two setting. This Wide is open. for three. And that's what can happen against the zone. You're going to give the perimeter shot. That's the one area that you're really going to get hurt. But again, the book says, he said last week, allow Meeks and Reynolds to shoot the ball. They only gave him two points on the basket. Now they correct it and make it three. And it's 44. Oh, look at him play defense. What's a foul by Reynolds? 
Talley is going to be called for the foul. Hey, what a defensive job by Chris Reynolds. For all you young kids, watch his stance. Tremendous knee flexion. Concentration on the basketball. Look at him flexing the knees. Look at him. He wants to play defense. I mean, he's a clap, scratcher, a claw. Oh, there's the little bump by Talley. Yeah, well, that could have been an intentional foul, too, because Talley just reached out to block him. Good call by Eddie Hightower. Michigan getting itself in uh, some foul trouble. Rob Palenka will check in for the first time. I really believe that we talk often about a game being broken down into four segments. If you talk about the management of a game, and the last four minutes prior to halftime is a key time. Right now, this is essential for Steve Fisher that psychologically his kids can get this deficit into single digits and not allow Indiana to get the spurt and go in at halftime up 15. Henderson is out and over back in, and Reynolds, the chink in his armor is free throw shooting. It's only been 57.9% this year. Shooting the basketball was the reason they were going to make sure that he spent the year just concentrating on shooting the ball and red shirt. But then they realized they needed his personality defensively to give this kid a spark. Neither shot had a chance to go in. 229 to go in the half. But he loves playing defense. Look at the way he gets down real low. Fosco for three. Loose ball. This foul, I think, on Palenka, and it is. Personal foul, Michigan, number three. Australia. Wow. Ed Burke. I love my tennis, Mike. I know you do. Shame he can't play. Oh, you really don't hurt a guy. <laughs> hey, Knight has agreed to play me in a charity match. He definitely has agreed. We're going to do that somewhere in Indiana. I'm going to blitz him. That's three, three in a row they've missed on a free throw line. I hope it goes better than the basketball game he had against Jim Beheim. Well, you know how to hurt a guy really badly. Beheim just crunched him. <laughs> Indiana had missed three in a row from the line. They're up by a dozen now, 45-33. This is a big possession right now for Michigan. They have to get a score right here. See, here's where Weber's got to be the big guy. He's got a locked in post. He's not a threat offensively the way he's playing right now. Three-point effort, more of a throw by Jawan Howard. Tally got the ball back. Bob Knight wanted to travel, didn't get it. See, Chris really has to learn how to get position on the floor. Just standing right now, Nova has no problem playing him. He wants to get good offensive rebound in position. That's what Weber wants. They got the numbers. He's got Cheney. He's got Cheney. Cheney set up to the three and didn't get it. Very unselfish. Down to a minute 32 to go. First half. Kirk Taylor is in for Michigan this evening. They want to bring Michigan out a little further. Oh, he missed Reynolds right there. Reynolds had the gap. See, they like it when defenses extend, just like this. They love this part because it opens up inside against the screens. Shot clock is down to 10. Oh, nice, nice great look. Reynolds missed it. Reynolds has come up empty twice on a free throw line, and now the layup. Big place here for Michigan to score. Palenka in and out. Wolverines needed one there. They've only hit one of their last 11, and then Cheney hurts them at the other end. That's why it's important to have a big-time punch scorer. Cheney is that kind of guy. This year, his numbers have been a little bit down, but I think they're down because they have more balance and more options. Cheney has 10. The lead is 14. Weber touches the ball inside 15 feet for the first time tonight except for a dunk. Here's a reverse layup, a foul before the shot. It looked like Nova will be called for the hold. Mike, maybe it's us. We had Michigan against Iowa, and we kept commenting on the fact that Chris was not getting the basketball and how he wasn't active. And today in the first half here, I believe he's taken really only one shot, and the one shot was off an offensive rebound. He doesn't put himself in possession, in position to be a scorer. Well, the other shot he had, he got the ball at the top of the circle, drove down the lane, got an offensive, offensive foul charge. Out. Michigan has not scored a field goal in the last five minutes and three seconds. If and was, Howard goes to the line, they have not missed tonight. If I were Steve Fisher, I would assign one of my assistant coaches to sit at a film with Chris Weber and just constantly work with him and teach him the art of trying to get free for a shot. And that's a look at Perry Watson standing next to Steve Fisher. Rich McIver, a sophomore, 6'9", 228 out of Freeport, Texas, comes in for Weber. They don't want him picking up his third foul in the last 34 seconds. He had 27 and 12 against Duke. Now, against Duke, he was getting his shots, and he was yeah. really a much more active player than I've seen lately. 
Howard with a nice soft touch on two free throws. Cuts it to 12. Now Riley will come in for Michigan. And they will get Howard out of there, who's also operating with two free throws. So Steve Fisher doing everything he can to protect the players he has in foul trouble. Well, that adjustment period we talk about that young people have to face coming out of scholastic ranks, how to move without the ball and how to play against screen. They're doing actually a pretty good job against the screen here tonight. Indiana will play for one. Shot clock is off. That's the game clock on the screen. Well, you got to believe Bailey or Anderson will be the two guys they'll look for. And also, well, Cheney, they got three options on the floor. Meeks pumps Bailey off balance. Can't hit it. Brought down by Taylor. His desperation shot didn't miss by much. John Saunders will be coming up in just a couple of minutes, but right now we're at halftime at Indiana where the Hoosiers lead the Wolverines by a dozen. I'll tell you something, right now, we had a great performance this week out of Shaquille O'Neal. 57 points in two games. A dominator. Great performance by Damon Bailey. Also Lawrence Bolton. But my winner, my winner of Player of the Week, let's go to Missouri. Welcome back to Bloomington, Indiana, where the Hoosiers lead the Wolverines by a dozen. The second half about to start. Let's take a look at the first half statistics. And it's rare for Indiana these days not to be shooting 50%, but the one that really jumps out at me here, no turnovers for Indiana. I don't know if I can ever remember a game where a team had no turnovers in a half. I can't remember the 13 years I'm doing a game on ESPN. I don't remember a game either. Zero turnovers, but the free throw line has really helped them. Look at the combination here, Jalen and Chris. Between both guys, they have a deuce, and between them, they're averaging better than 35 points a game. And one of the reasons, no movement without the basketball. Chris is one for one. Now you're going to see motion. Watch the movement right here by Indiana. Watch all their players. Look at 32. Look at the screen right there by 44. Look at this constant motion. I mean, just constantly moving without the basketball. Michigan's doing a pretty good job defensively. Right here, freeze it. See, freeze it right here. Now watch Graham setting up. He is setting up right now against Jackson to peel to the basket, and he catches him staring at the basketball. See how he caught him staring? And there's the layup. Thank you. The fourth and fifth pass made that happen. But, you know, I don't blame Chris Weber. He's young. He's coming out of the high school ranks. He's a talented young man. I just think that the coaches have to sit him down and let him learn from experiences like this. I mean, the kid has got one shot in the half because no one really helps him out by laying any kind of screens for him. And the reason Jalen Rose hasn't scored is because he hasn't been in there at all. He's only had two shots, played seven minutes in the first half. He's out with three personal fouls. He will start the second half along with Weber. They'll have a lot more, believe me, positive moments, those two. They're roommates. They room together and just have great admiration for each other. Michigan had a single field goal the last six minutes of the first half. They could use a bucket here. Jalen had, had a three-point shot and passed on. Jalen had a quiet half against Duke, and in the second half, he was explosive. Baseline drive. Indiana got away with a push, but the tip-in is good. And Jawan Howard was the man who gets credit for the bucket. The lead is 10. Howard had a big game against Illinois. His best game, 13 points, five rebounds, and his homecoming down there in Champaign. He has 11 right here. He made a good tip, quick to the basket. Powerful player, good low post player. There's Indiana, typical passing game. Dribble penetration. See, that was Bailey dribbling, trying to get into the gap. Nova, who was playing with an awful lot of confidence, had that one partially blocked by Weber. Nova really asserted himself offensively, looking at the basket. Oh, back cut right behind Reynolds. But notice the help defensively. That is just great team defense. Reynolds gets stripped on a backdoor cut, yet his teammates come back and recover. Just incredible defense. Hey, hey, man, man. Watch right here, the defensive player. Now he's going to get caught. Now watch right now the cut to the back door, but look at the help. Now the help is going to come over. Look at the great help rotating over to the basketball. Howard with a miss. Weber offensive rebound. That's how he gets his deuces They've off the to. offensive board. He has two shots and has four points. Both on offensive rebounds. And he has eight rebounds for the game. Oh, he's a big-time rebounder and shot blocker as well. Eight-point game right now. He can play for me any day of the week. Five-second five second call. Michigan's really picked up the intensity coming out of that locker room. That is the first turnover against Indiana in this game. 
Remember this now. Duke had the big lead on Michigan, and they came back and had that game won, except for a couple careless mistakes at the end. They were up five with a minute and 42 to go. That was at Michigan, however. Bailey reached in. Weber, nice job to keep it alive. Bosco for three. That would have been a big one. That would have cut it to five. Reynolds missed Cheney. He was ahead of the pack. Should have made like Staubach and get him the ball. Oh, they missed Cheney again. Nova. Spacing 15, 17 feet apart. They like that curl move. May have been tally with a reach in on that play. We'll see. And it was. Chris Reynolds, we're going to look for number 21. Oh, that's a moving screen. That's an illegal screen by number 21. When you lay the screen, you must be stationary and have both feet planted. He was moving, laying a block, a la football player. Reynolds, Anderson. Another rebound to Jawan Howard. He has five. Howard and Weber give him two solid rebounders. First time Weber gets the ball down low, puts it up, got it back, and now Anderson has it. Weber becoming much more active. Well, they're starting to look to him a little bit. I think that that was addressed at halftime in an adjustment. Exactly. Here's the travel by Cheney. Indiana really out of sync here in the beginning of the half. Bob Knight just comes up and gives it that look. 574 W's for Knight. Look at Weber right now. See, they get him the ball, post him, and he has that quick move. If they can lay some screens and have him flash to the ball, I think he can be unstoppable, Weber. A low to Howard this time. Rose back to him as they exchange passes. And the foul will be called on Calvert Cheney. It is obvious that Michigan had to address how to get post position inside because their players are really posting up a lot better than they did in the first half. It looked like they spent most of halftime practicing. Maybe they taught him. Steve Fisher got down and yeah. said, hey, this is how we post up. But what a run. National champs. Yeah. Mr. Fisher's got the ring. Six games in a row. You saw that one and three record against Indiana. Don't feel too bad. A lot of people had that. Tally travels. Indiana's had the ball four times so far in the half. They have yet to score. Their lead's been cut to eight. Of course, we saw Ohio State make that huge comeback after being down by 19. That's just a big rebound. Did you see the way he stretched out went laterally to get that rebound? Rose trying to score for the first time. Howard with the rebound. That's why Howard was an excellent high school player. He dominated on the interior. Good offensive rebounder, good power player. These Michigan kids are for real. 47-41. Indiana in the process of squandering another big lead. The one thing I don't see Indiana doing, I was just going to say that right there, is dribble penetration here, like they were doing against Ohio State. But there's an example of Bailey putting it to the deck and attacking the defense and with the And Jalen Rose makes a critical mistake, reaches around and picks up his fourth foul on a play where officials are going to call it whether you make contact or not. Not a smart play for a smart young man. Jalen, inexperienced, playing on a road. It'll take a little time to get adjusted, but I'll tell you this, he's got talent. Now watch him right here. See, you don't want to reach there with three fouls. That's a no-no. Well, he certainly made contact, but even if he doesn't, most of the time they'll call it. Damon Bailey misses on a drop. Well, what you do there is you get that film, you get that video, and you really take that and show it to them. Indiana has not scored in the second half. Bodies flying. Here comes Reynolds. Three on three. Nice dish, and Graham puts it on. Reynolds really applies pressure, both defensively and offensively. Defensively with his intensity on the defensive end, and offensively by pushing the ball up the floor. Lead is back to eight. Bosco into the lane, following. Tough shot, can't hit it. Bailey lost it out of bounds. Took his eye off of it after he had the rebound. 15.56 to go in the game. Indiana 49, Michigan 41. Mike, we often speak about creating the fast break opportunity by applying pressure against the defense. Here's Reynolds now by pushing the ball up the court. Right here, freeze it. See, right now, he is pushing the ball, and he's looking to get it to his teammate with dribble penetration. And he's going to catch this guy to try and catch him, and then he's going to break to the goal. 
Now watch right here. There it is. There's the little dish, and there's the dump down and the conversion, and he finalizes. You like to convert at least 60% of your fast break opportunities. And that was the only field goal Indiana's had so far this half. The Hoosiers one of five. Michigan is three of 11. Look at that defensive stance. He plays so hard, Chris Reynolds, and makes up for any liability offensively. Tally passing on shots he had taken earlier in the half. Weber on, I believe, a pass from Howard. He's been so hot, I don't think he'd make a shot like that. The one great thing that Weber possesses is tremendous hands. He has really strong hands that are very soft. Cheney with a runner, 51 43. Cheney has a dozen. Cheney averaged 21 a game last year, down to about 15 9. They're starting to go to Weber a little bit more. Really made a point out of it. He exchanges the pass with Howard, hits the basket, and the foul on Damon Bailey. Simple high low entry to get the ball up to Weber, who's a good passer at the high post, and he dumps it down to his teammate, Jawan Howard, down inside. Call this the high-low entry. See, there's Weber with the great size. He can look right over the top of the defense, and that's the low post strength and power of Howard. Got to give a lot of credit to the Michigan coaching staff. They saw what happened to them in the first half. They went in the locker room, and they totally changed what they've been doing. Well, they've adjusted. They've involved Weber into the offensive scheme of things. And Weber and Howard are really pumped. That one was off of Anderson. The lead is down to six, and it will be Michigan ball. What a Scores difference. coming in. Duke hammering Boston University, UNC Charlotte. Jeff Mullins with a great club this year. It's Virginia Tulane. Commonwealth losing to Tulane. Weber much more aggressive, and he's fouled. See, somebody's got to get into Chris Weber and simply say, son, you are Udo number one. You're our PT peer. You're our all Rolls Royce player. We need you to take charge. Apparently somebody did. There's Weber right now. I mean, he wants the rock right now. He says, get it to me. These guys can't handle me. Come on, Henderson. If I get the ball, you got to foul me. Weber has struggled at the free throw line. One for 12 in the Big Ten. I think he puts too much palm on the ball and doesn't flex his knees. Oh. Off the backboard. Will Chamberlain style. See, I really don't believe that Chris is flexing his knees enough and he's not getting enough fingertip on a basketball. See, he's, he's hugging the ball. He's hugging the ball. He banked them both in. He just found a style. I didn't look like John Saunders shooting him. I saw Saunders shoot. That's how John shoots, off the glass. 51-47. Weber now has eight. And the crowd getting a little anxious. Henderson forced that one up, missed it badly, got it back. He's fouled by Jackson. I think Henderson, a little pride in himself, knows the reputation of Weber. They played in a lot of the high school All-American games against each other. And right now he's seeing Weber take charge. He says, hey, I'm going to show him I can play too. That will be four on Jackson. He'll join Jalen Rose on the bench with four. King comes in. There are so many outstanding impact freshmen in America right now. So many young kids making the transition out of high school and becoming immediate players. Henderson, 65% free throw shooter, but he's missed two tries tonight. That one looked pretty good. He's one of the better diaper dandies, Allen Henderson. Remember, he's battling a strep throat. Missed the game against Ohio State. Played part-time against Northwestern. Excellent rebounder, especially on the offensive end of the floor. Good shot blocker, runs the court really well, has good quickness. Lead is back to six, and Michigan having some real good times here offensively. Tally with a chance for three instead, goes low to Howard again. That's what Bob Gibbons wrote about him. He said he was the best high school low post player in America around the boxes. We haven't seen this out of him like we're seeing right now. Well, that's a career high 17 for Jawan Howard. The lead down to four. He's using his great strength. And miscommunication between Graham and Anderson. They turn it over the fourth of the game for Indiana. All coming in this half. Hanging right in there like they did against Duke. Okay, there's no fear on this Michigan team, is there? Well, you know, they weren't knocked out by Duke. Duke had him on the ropes ready to knock him out, and it didn't happen. The lead is four. They spread the floor, so Howard gets open, and he 
hits again. He's getting the ball too easily, something that usually doesn't happen against Indiana. He's sitting down in a box, getting the ball too easy. Howard has 19. The lead is cut to two. Here's a foul before the shot. And all this is being done with Rose on the bench, their leading scorer, who does not have a point tonight. Jawan Howard, 25. Little single reverse move. See how he had that single reverse move? And he dropped inside. Excellent move. And he attacks another diaper, Dandy Henderson. He said it's an m and It's a mismatch. Oh, nice curl move by Bailey. And little, Damon Bailey with that soft touch. And that was created off a little screen, a little curl move in the lane. Michigan has scored 16 points in this half. Weber and Howard have them all. Bosco for three. Howard offensive rebound. Tally for three. Weber had his hands on it. Knocked out of bounds. Out to Indiana. Weber and Howard are really getting tremendous inside position on the offensive glass. They are really making a statement here in the second half. If Weber gets angry and plays with a little bit more energy and a little bit more spirit, I know he's a very passive kind of kid, but if he picks that up, they won't stop him. Oh, what a great drive. Great drive, no shot. Bailey tries to follow, thinks better of it, kicks it back to Graham. Graham lost control. Bailey almost oh. set shot for three. That's heartbreak hotel for Michigan. That really hurts. Damon Bailey with 14. That's a momentum builder. Anderson really mugging on right now on Weber. I mean, he's really holding Weber in the lane. Bailey comes across, tries to steal, goes into the bench, through the bench, and into the first row of seats. They love him, the all-time leading scorer in high school basketball in Indiana. Over 3,000 points in his career. Anderson and Weber. Look at Anderson, the senior. He says, come on, freshman. I'm not going to let you get it that easily. And there's David Bailey with the help and the anticipation. Seven-point game. Michigan can get close. They just can't seem to take the lead. It's a tough pass by Howard trying to hit Weber. And then Weber commits the personal. They tried to throw the lob up to Weber for the slam jam band. Shaquille O'Neal really executes that well down at LSU. Wasn't much of a lob, Dick. That was a See, line drive. Single reverse spin move to the baseline. See, he's setting him up. He's got the eye contact, but it was a not a good lob. The best lob pass I've ever seen, Sherman Douglas down at Syracuse. Seven-point game, 12-28 to go. Anderson puts it up and in. Get a T.O., Mr. Fisher. Get a timeout and regroup. Get a timeout, Stevie. He'll get a TV timeout in 20 seconds if he can wait for that one. Well, sometimes you wait and it's too late, but this time it's a good decision. Lead is nine. Look at Anderson. I mean, he is holding. Jimmy King for three. The outside shots won't go. Howard, another rebound, tries to get it to Weber. He's followed by Meeks. I think Howard is really coming alive. He did against Illinois. I did not see the game. But tonight, he is becoming a big-time college player. He has just had a marvelous night. Eight rebounds. 19 points. Bosco comes out. Riley will come in. Jalen Rose checks back in with the four fouls, and Weber will come out. Also, he provides such a presence on a baseline with his upper body strength. Twelve two to go in the game. Offensive foul. Tally reached out with a free arm and pushed off. That's his third. We'll be back in a moment. 60-51, Indiana lengthens its lead to nine with 11.59 to go in the ball game. Michigan has been close several times. They have not been able to tie it up or take the lead. And Howard and Weber have really been on a tear. And this is after Weber was almost invisible in the first half, never moved for the ball. Howard didn't do that much either. He had five in the first half. Mike, do we realize those are two freshmen playing in Bloomington, Indiana, against one of the top five teams in the United States of yeah, America? Right. I mean, it's just incredible. I think it's amazing with a capital A to think about that when you're looking at those young people performing the way they have. These guys are going to be great before they're done. 
They have to get a few more parts to fill in with that puzzle. A couple of backcourt players. They signed one by the name of Fife, point guard out of Clarkston, Michigan. Might want to try to get the ball to Meeks because he's being guarded by Rose, who works with four fouls right now. See, right now, Anderson is trying to lock inside, but this possession is big. There's Meeks. Rose has to switch. So difficult to check against Indiana. There's Bailey, the what a pass. Henderson scores. That's the point I was trying to make, Mike. You guard them on the first, the second, the third pass, but eventually they break you down with that constant motion and movement and screen. You wonder why more clubs don't utilize the screening game the way they do. Foul on Howard, his third. See, look at the motion right now. Watch the people away from the basketball. Look at Henderson. He lays the screen, pops out. The guy that lays the screen is usually a dangerous guy. That's what Henderson was. Henderson now three out of five from the line. The lead grows to a dozen. You forget he's a freshman as well. These guys were all playing high school last year at this time. Howard nearly lost. Jalen Rose, 20 points a game, has not scored. Tally for three. Boy, they needed that one. Michael Tally was Mr. Basketball in Michigan, was known as a scorer, played for Ben Kelso, outstanding scholastic coach at Cooley High School. Tally has a dozen. The lead is cut to nine. A lot of poise offensively as well in the end. They have a lot of poise with the basketball, a lot of patience. That was the first bucket of this half, by the way, for Tally. Bailey leans in, got it to Henderson. Boy, he had his shot changed. Riley thought he had the block. Instead, he gets the foul. Henderson, what makes him special is his agility. He's got excellent agility for a big guy. Arsenal foul, Michigan. Number 22, Eric Wright. Boston College, I'll tell you right now, they should give Jim O'Brien a multi-year contract. He's in the last year. Rutgers with a lead. There is Marquette beating on Notre Dame. We'll talk about up and down. Notre Dame has shown us two sides of everything this year. Jim O'Brien in the last year of a contract at Boston College as Henderson converts. Henderson out of Carmel, Indiana. His dad is a cardiologist. Mom an educator. Way short on that one, but so bad that he kicked back out with some help. And Indiana ball again. And a little illegal screen right there by Henderson stepping out, laying that back screen. Toughest screen to defend is the back screen. Chaney. That's his favorite move. The little curl move into the lane. Calvert Chaney has 14, and the lead is a dozen again. Tally for three, likes that spot. A poor job defensively by Bailey, not rotating out quick enough. They know he can really shoot the ball from the top of the circle. Tally has 15 as we approach the 10 minute mark. Those three pointers can really keep you in it. Bailey got away with a walk. Tally stole it anyway. Saw the three point shot last night. Keep Oklahoma in the game. Brent Price. Jalen Rose with a tough pass saved by Howard. And then he throws it away. Jalen is totally out of sync here. Sure tonight. Is, Dick. Meeks had it kicked. That will be Indiana ball and they'll recycle the shot clock. He hesitated right there. Look at Jalen Rose. Look at the little kick. He's playing a little. Hey, Pele, Pele. That's so good. That's a nice kick save, you know? Oh, nice that, that nice curl move again. But he finally missed one. Michigan still in this game, down by only nine. Rose trying to put his first points on the board, and he throws up an air ball. He's not even close tonight. He's got to come out of the game. He's not in the sink right now. They got to bring him out of the basketball game. Bailey to Henderson. Spinning move. Missed it badly. Got a foul underneath. Let's see who gets it. Jody Sylvester with the authoritative call. Jawan's got that guilty look on him. Jawan Howard picks up his fourth. So he and Rose both have four. Coming up a little bit later, number eight, Kentucky, goes into Jawan Howard. He'll sit down with him. Weber is back in, and Polinka is back in for Steve Fisher. Excellent move by Steve Fisher. He knows that Rose is struggling. He brings him out for a moment or two. Right now, he needs a coach maybe to walk over, talk to him a little bit. He played for Perry Watson in high school. Had a brilliant high school career. Bailey, 82% free throw shooter. Is it two for two tonight? Well, he looks like he has a great stroke, but when the ball gets to the basket, you can tell what a stroke he has. 
the ball just sort of oozes through the net. Well, he's really playing with so much more confidence, and the reason his numbers are a lot better. He's getting a lot more minutes, averaging better than 16 a game in his last six starts. The rim is a stranger on most of those. 68-57, 9-15 left in the game from Bloomington. Danger time right now for Michigan. Oh, look at Weber. They can get an offensive foul on him. You're not allowed, according to points of emphasis this year, to back down and get in position in the post. You can't sit down and push the defensive player away. Instead, Henderson will get his fourth for Indiana. Weber was trying to sit in the post. Now watch him right now. See, he's sitting in the post. He's not allowed to back. See how he's trying to back him out of here? That's close, though. Very close. That's only the 15 foul on Indiana. They try to dump it into Weber. Instead, Riley got it. Missed it badly. Indiana saves. Cheney. They thought they got Weber with a fifth foul. They got to attack Weber right now. They got to go right down inside against Weber. Cheney with that move again into the lane. There's a foul. Weber was in the area. Who gets it? Cheney and Bailey execute that so well. Curling into the lane. Weber gets the foul. He's one of the nice guys in coaching, Steve Fisher. And who says nice guys can't finish first? He wins the national yeah, he championship. He sure did. 1989 in Seattle. Romeo Robinson with those two big free throws, putting up that national championship trophy in Ann Arbor. Four fouls on Weber. So he, Jawan Howard, and Jalen Rose all have four. Jackson also has four. Second free throw is no good, but the lead is a dozen. Some breathing room for Indiana. Tally wants the ball. Meeks wants to keep it away from him. Meeks really gives him another. That's a walk. Meeks gives him a nice look defensively coming in. An experienced player replacing Reynolds. They don't miss a whole lot in terms of experience when you bring in Dover and oh, no. bring in guys like Graham and Meeks off the bench. They have a solid eight-man rotation. People that not only can come in and not hurt you, they can help you. 8.36 left. 69-57, Indiana by a dozen with 8.36 to go in the ballgame. Jalen Rose, the leading scorer for Michigan, has been held scoreless tonight. He's been spent most of the night on the bench in foul trouble, never found a rhythm. Jawan Howard has made up uh, the deficit with a career high 19. Indiana leading by 10 points at the free throw line, 12 overall. They did not have a turnover the first half. Good move by Steve Fisher now, bringing back Jalen Rose, showing some confidence in a young guy. Even though he's struggling, he's had such a great early career so far at Michigan. Well, you got to go with what you have right now. Down by a dozen with 832. Anderson with a miss, and Anderson commits the foul as Riley got the rebound. Dick, of course, the transition for freshmen uh, is a, one of the most major steps they take in their athletic careers. I really believe that freshmen face four major factors. Expectations with all the notoriety, very difficult to deal with. Blending, trying to be now the third and fourth option. Then there's the academic adjustment. And then also, for the first time in their life, they have to deal with media criticism. People now scrutinize their every move. And some guys can't deal with it, and it leads to transfer city. Bye-bye, let me run. And other players, Hang in there, hang in there, and have good careers. Polenka, wide open, three-pointer, cuts it to nine. He came out of high school with a reputation as a three-point shooter. They'll need at least a couple of more, though. Meeks setting the offense with 7.49 left to go in the game. See it? Cheney trying to set up for that curl move inside. Anderson, too good a shooter for Riley to leave him open. He's an excellent face-up shooter. Mr. Basketball out of Illinois. He's had such a solid career here at Indiana. He has 10. Jalen Rose working on Meeks. Couldn't get the shot. Riley, little turnaround jumper, went in and out, dropped back in again. Riley had a lot of positive minutes last year. Came out of St. Joe's High School in Cleveland, where the best player of all time is one of our analysts, Clark Kellogg, came out of that high school and went on to fame at Ohio State. The lead is nine. Michigan needs a big stop right here. They can't get anything in transition. Their defense doesn't make anything happen to give them the numbers game. Cheney working hard for the ball, can't get his hands on it. If you were to chart Michigan tonight, you would not see many transition baskets. 
Cheney against Jackson working with four fouls. Good defense by Jackson. This is Meeks' reverse layup, shielded his body, and Weber is really upset because he'll get the foul. That could be bye-bye. And it is. Weber, eight points. I'll tell you what. Nine rebounds. He did a really solid job coming out in the second half, sure did. wanting the basketball. As I said, he's got to sit down with a film. He's got to sit with one of the coaches, and every day just keep working and working on how to get free to get the basketball, how to post up, how to be more aggressive. We talk about V cuts, ducking moves, how to post inside. He's got to work on those on a daily basis. He and Rose shook hands as uh, Weber will sit down. A couple of quality kids, aren't they, Dick? Yeah, they really are. You know, they roomed together, and the night before they played Illinois, after they had lost two in a row, they got together and they said, hey, Jalen, we can't lose three going to Bloomington. We have to get a W down there in Champaign. Well, the two of them went out, and they did their part. Rose had 17. Weber had 16 points, 16 rebounds. And Steve Fisher told us today when I told him that story, he said, well, I wish they would have told me that it would have been that easy. <laughs> Juwan Howard will come back in. With 6.46 left. 71-62 Indiana. Meeks will go to the line where he's one of two tonight. Number three all-time assists at Indiana is Jamal Meeks. Next week they have a date here with Purdue. Gene Cady, you talk about a guy that gets maximum. He beats Michigan up at Michigan. He beats Iowa at home where they have one of the great environments. I still say in the Big Ten, the three best environments are down in Columbus, Ohio, down in Mackey Arena in Purdue, and right here in Bloomington. One out of two from the line. Michigan still alive. Down by 10 with 6.41 to go in the game. Jackson low to Howard, who's had a tremendous 90s foul. And they'll get Meeks for it. Howard's really getting positioned very easily inside, almost like he did on a regular basis on a scholastic level. Now watch him right now. He's going to duck inside. See, he really works a little harder to get free than Weber does. Here's the ball. That little hesitation right there. Should have taken up. Look at the paint. He says, come on, go in. So out of Chicago, Illinois. Who, by the way, tomorrow, they're going to have a nice party for Lou Henson, I understand. Jimmy Collins is assistant. They're allowed to start to recruit again. And the coach at King High School and all his buddies are going to throw a little party. I think the party they'd like is to get Rashad Griffin, the seven-footer, who's a junior and the best junior maybe in America. The number's on Howard. Career-high points. He can match his career-high in rebounds if he gets one more. An excellent touch the free throw line tonight. He's cut the lead to eight. This has got to be a real builder of confidence for Howard. Back to back games like he's had against Illinois and here. There's Tulane tied with Sonny Smith's claw. Penn State down against Butler. They got a good player. Archibald, excellent player. Johnny Orr doing a good job with Justin Thigpen. Meeks with six and a half minutes to go. They're hanging right in this game. Only eight down. Cheney comes out to Greg Graham. Look at Bailey Sigler in the first screen. He's got bumped. They're just so active. They really have the art of movement down to a sight. See right there. Anderson here. got away with a walk, and now they call it. Yeah, they nailed him. But again, he had an easy layup down to gut of the defense. Bobby knows that right now is a danger time. This is DT, baby. This is danger time. Trying to fire his club up. Jalen Rose for his first points of the night. It's a three. Down to five, Jalen Rose. Very calm, cool, the long arms. You can't scare that kid. Oh, he's from the streets of Detroit. Believe me, you're not scaring Jalen Rose. No, not if you're wearing shorts and have a basketball on you. Forget it. 72-67. I don't see Indiana using the dribble penetration like they did against Ohio State to create a lot of foul opportunities. They're not going to the line that often in the second half here. Bob Knight just told them to spread the court. Spacing, spacing. Everybody at the free throw line, and they'll try to go back door. Trying to use a lot of that shot clock with each possession. Bailey down the lane, reverse layup. Didn't get it, but he'll draw the foul on King. There's the dribble penetration. Creates a lot of opportunities, and not only creates a scoring opportunity for the driver, but if the defense rotates over, you can dish the basketball. Uh, it's called on Jackson instead of King. Oh, see the defensive right there. Rose, little Matador defense. Poor job helping by Rose. Oh, that should have not. I don't think that foul should have been. 
on Jackson. It looked like King picked it up earlier. He really hacked at the ball. Jackson and King came out of the state of Texas. And Jimmy was telling me today, he said, if all the guys from Texas stayed at the University of Texas, Tom Penders would be a very happy man. Greg Ostertag went out to Kansas. Jason Walton out to Minnesota. Well, that will be five on Jackson. He's from out of Texas. Mario Bennett also from Texas playing for Bill Frieda down at Arizona State. Bosco will come in. He has that three-point range. Good defender, too, on a baseline, Bosco. Bailey, four out of four from the line. He has really picked up his game offensively. When Indiana has had uncharacteristically uh, lacked success tonight at the free throw line. They look a little passive right here. They really do, Mike. They don't seem to be playing with that kind of emotion that they demonstrated when they played against Ohio State. They hit 23 out of 34, which is about two-thirds and not very good. A lot of opportunities, though. Six-point game approaching five minutes. Oh, right inside they had Howard missed them. Had Still a got shooter. it. Howard, tough shot, hit it, and he's fouled. Had him a little sooner. Look at the emotion of Jawan Howard. This kid's playing on a road. I mean, that's that's just magnificent, baby, with a capital M. I mean, he's playing on the road in one of the tough environments, and he wants the basketball. Watch 25. He says, give me the rock. Look at him lock over the top of the defense. I mean, he seals off. He says, Cheney, I'm too strong. I'm too big for you. Oh, he wanted the ball. But you got to like kids that want the ball. And he's hit seven out of nine from the free throw line, only a 62% shooter on the year, and those have been perfect. He's a much different player than you and I saw against Iowa. Sure is. 73-70. Mission has got these fans on the edge of their seat, and Bob Knight up off his chair. Steve Fisher's making like Karishka Kwok, who caught his second on the sideline with all kinds of contortions. He wants him to jam in the lane and allow Meeks to shoot the long-range jumper. They are leaving Meeks alone. It's amazing watching Fisher on the sideline. Shot clock down to 13. Indiana's trying to protect the lead rather than build the lead. Bailey, baseline jumper. Oh, look at that. Well, he's thinking of building the lead. Damon Bailey with 19. The spread goes back to five. I mean, the net barely moves when that kid shoots. Boskell, that's a two. And he hasn't had any luck outside. Jalen Rose trying to get it off of Indiana out to Michigan. These young kids are giving Indiana all they can really have here in terms of a challenge. But you don't want a moral victory. Steve Fisher That's doesn't right. want to go in a locker room and say, well, we played them tough. Yeah. He wants the W. Yeah, he wants to beat them. Tally will come back in, and Bosco will come out. Indiana, of course, undefeated in the Big Ten on an 11-0 win streak. Michigan is 2-2. Two two. Jalen Rose with a runner. Won't go for him. Riley will be called for the foul over the back of Anderson. Remember this about Michigan, though, Mike. Their first five games, four have been on the road in the Big Ten. What a way to grow up and get invited into college basketball. Hope you'll be with us for the Australian Open. We'll have the quarterfinal. And there is the free throw difference. Indiana with a nine point edge in points made. Now make it 10. And they lead overall by six. That has been a big strength for them all year. Yeah, all year long going to the free throw line. They had the big numbers in the free throws in the first half. Now they're starting to pick it up now in the second half as well. Anderson, six for six from the line. The lead is seven. Can't force it into Howard now. I know he wants the ball. It has to be there. Here's Meeks. And Bob Knight says, take it out. Kill some of that clock. Spread the court. Go for the high percentage shot. Execute. Look at Anderson. He's trying to get the crowd involved in the game. Back cut off. Bailey was trying to set him up with the back cut off Anderson. Cheney ducks inside. Great. Cheney at the baseline. The lead is nine. Great execution. 
execution. Go to your number one option. Duck him into the low post. Howard, nice kick back to Tally. Gets it back again. And Jawan Howard has looked like an all Big Ten first team player tonight. Good decision by Tally. Doesn't have the three point shot. They play a little two man game. Back outside, back inside. Jawan Howard has 26. Every time he scores, he sets a new career high. Howard, Weber, Rose, Jackson, King, the freshman, my friends. 2.59 to go. Indiana by seven. Bailey, head fake on the three pointer. And that'll get Tally out on. Here's a foul away from the ball. That's going to be a hold on Jimmy King. Many of us thought tonight that eventually Michigan would falter against the screens and against the kind of movement of Indiana. But they have really held their own here tonight and not allowing Indiana to blow them away. What's even more amazing about it, Dick, is they have been in foul trouble since the game began. You know, next you have Kentucky Monster Mash, Mashburn against Allen Houston. My preseason All-American, I had Houston as a guard with Mayberry. But my midseason, I would go with Bobby Hurley. And I would go with Jimmy Jackson up front, Shaquille O'Neal, Byron Houston, and Christian Lee. Cheney hits the first, could get another. 80 to 72. Cheney wants the ball late in the game, and that's the key. We talked about today at our production meeting how you have to have the special player, the man that wants the ball late in the game. All the great teams have that. Cheney has to be that player. 252 left. Back to Bloomington in a moment. Every time Michigan gets within a couple of buckets, Indiana pulls out again. Michigan, two timeouts left. Both teams in the bonus if we have a tie-up. The possession arrow favors Indiana. Notice Indiana with the execution going to their option number one, Cheney. Execution and experience could be the difference late in the game when you have two teams like this contrasting youth and experience. Now watch the slash by Cheney. Freeze it. A oh, great position inside. And there's the little turnaround jump shot. Again, he wanted the basketball. And that's what we're talking about. The great teams have that. Duke has Leitner. You take a look at Oklahoma State with Byron Houston. And once he gets McLean. the ball down there, you can't stop it. Riley, triple team, misses it. Howard goes for the jam. And Howard will get the foul. That silly foul right there. Just youth, inexperience, over-aggressive play by Jawan Howard. And that will be five on Jawan Howard. He deserves one heck of a hand. He played a heck of a basketball game, Jawan Howard, tonight. 26 points, eight rebounds, brilliant effort. Now Howard will stay on the court as long as he can. You have 30 seconds after a player fouls out to make the uh, substitution. I'll tell you, he keeps playing like this. He'll become one of the impact freshmen in you America. Bet. Syracuse up by a deuce. They have a tremendous die for Dandy and Lawrence Moat, and the kid that doesn't get a lot of publicity. Tulane one. Harry Clark will be one of the hot coaches in America. Here comes Jawan Howard. Deserves a tremendous hand. Everybody stands on the Michigan bench, and they should, because he was a brilliant performer tonight, quite literally. He and Tally kept him in the ball game. Weber really whispering in his ear, Jawan, you were brilliant today. You just keep playing like that. <laughs> you know what I'd like to see Michigan do? Set up a 3-2 offense with Weber on one low post, Howard on the other, three guys on a perimeter, let them exchange with horizontal screens along the baseline, and then have one of them play a little high-low action, flash to the high post, dump down inside. Hey, Steve Fisher, I'm going to be the architect of the Michigan offense. Cheney missed them both. The lead is nine. Tally. Missed a shot, Damon Bailey with a rebound. That would have cut it to seven points. Playing Meeks at the end of the game here instead of Reynolds. Meeks just wants to work it on the clock. Nice job of ball handling. Got a lot of experience, picked up his dribble. And got it to Damon Bailey, the guy they want, because he'll make the free throw. Any kind of interchange like that, it's a perfect opportunity to double up. Watch Meeks back does not want to get trapped like that, because he doesn't want to shoot the free throw. Careful for some backdoor cuts now because Michigan's overextended defensively. Oh, Indiana's winning the five-man game. Everybody foul line extended and then slide inside. Bailey, it's a two-point shot. Nova knocks it out for Meeks. Good play by Nova. And Polenko will commit the foul. Now, Meeks not a bad free throw shooter, 78.6, but uh, Damon Bailey is at 83. Duke 
Oklahoma State and Indiana like to run that five-man game. Five guys across the foul line. Kentucky, Tennessee, SEC action. Timmy B, Randall, and Larry Conley ready to call that. 146 to go here. The lead is nine. And Meeks will go to the line. Indiana in the second half is at 13 out of 19. Look at this. Michigan shooting very well. They've only missed one in each half, but Indiana with 28 total points as opposed to 14. 42 attempts. They really heated it up in the last about five minutes because earlier they really weren't going to the line like they are right now. And that again is typical Indiana basketball. It can't shock us. You just have to look at the numbers. 83 72. And Michigan's hopes of pulling one out here in Bloomington. Going up in smoke. Tally. They'll have to go to the three. Jalen Rose. Four games on a road. It looks like they'll be two and two. I think a lot of teams would take two and two on a road in a league like the Big Ten. Palenka tries a three. They'll be two and three overall. Because the game at home hurts them. That's right. Losing at home and a living room floor to Purdue really hurts them. Bailey trying to beat the pressure. May have got away with pushing off a little bit. Yeah, Cheney for a layup. Bosco will commit to personal. Well, Michigan really learned something tonight here. I think the, the offense that they went to in the second half, far more productive for Steve Fisher than their first half, and they found out that Jawan Howard can be an impact player. I think the thing that they have to do right now is go back to the drawing board and find a way to get Chris Weber to be a little bit more active and a little hungrier offensively because he has too much talent to take one shot in the first half. Bailey with that soft free throw makes it a 12-point game. And they are starting to stream out of Assembly Hall. What a classy kid Chris Weber is, too. You get a chance to talk to him. He has his priorities in order. He's just a class all-around young man. Bailey hits them both, and it's 85-72. Indiana with a comfortable 13-point lead with a minute 17 to go. Excuse me. Top five this week, Duke playing Boston University tonight. UCLA at Cal uh, at Cal on Thursday. Oklahoma State plays ROU on Saturday. Though all those three teams undefeated. Then comes Indiana with an 11-game win streak. They'll play at Purdue Tuesday. Kansas against Nebraska, 13 and one. Well, it'll be a 12-game win streak for Indiana. We'll be here. But here's Leitner with Duke. They go to McLean, big guy with his M&M. He's got Murray there as well. Byron Houston last night at the end of the game made some big plays for Oklahoma State against Oklahoma. And Calvert chaney has got to be that guy for Indiana. And tonight he did. He made a couple of big plays late in the game when they were being threatened by Michigan. Jalen Rose, one out of nine from the floor tonight. Cheney to Meeks. And there is a reach around foul by Tally. That one should have been intentional. It Without a grabbed doubt. him by the waist. As soon as you grab a guy, it's intentional. You know, the performance by Jalen Rose today, Jawan Howard against Iowa, the thing that's going to happen with young people, you're going to have that up and down. You're going to have the one day, the great performance. They're going to be like the Dow Jonesers, the Dow Jones market. Oh, there's my Super 6. The most impact. Danielle Marshall down at Connecticut can flat out play. And what an underrated backcourt Connecticut has with Burrell and Chris Smith. Makes four out of seven from the line tonight. The lead still very comfortable. 13 with a minute three to go. Meeks with seven points on the night. Missed again. Michigan still needs a miracle. A real Rose. miracle. Cheney with a rebound being hacked at mud there and lost it. Rose hits the jumper and Michigan will signal timeout. They have a single timeout left and 47 seconds on the clock. Tim Brando and Larry Conley standing by for Kentucky against Tennessee. Then at 11.30, SportsCenter, Bob Lee and Gary Miller will update you on everything, including the bizarre situation with the San Antonio Spurs. That is really bizarre down here. Bob Bass, I understand, has taken over for Larry Brown. But I'll tell you one thing, Larry Brown will have some people calling. You can bet on that because the guy, everywhere he's been, he knows how to win. He knows how to put a team together. He knows what it takes to win on the collegiate and professional level. I remember meeting Bob Bass when he coached. I believe they called them the Miami Floridians. They traveled all over the state of Florida and played, and uh, Bass was the coach at that point. Take a look at the Big Ten standings. 
Indiana, of course, came in here 4-0. Oh. We've updated that to make them 5-0. and oh. Ohio State, Minnesota, and Purdue, each with one loss. That's got to be a surprise there, Dick, doesn't it? I think the surprise right now, the disappointment, I don't see Iowa up there at all. No. Iowa had an experienced team, came on strong at the end of last year, beat Ohio State, beat Indiana here, returned A.C. Earl. So Tom Davis has got to be a little disappointed. How about Purdue and Minnesota? Yes, real surprise right there, Purdue and Minnesota. Gene Cady and Clem Haskins with his young people really have done well. Tough break down in Minnesota. They lost the key player, Randy Carter, due to, in due to injury. Only 17 and three against Michigan at Assembly Hall. I really believe Bobby Knight can catch the all-time record of eight off run. 875 wins. Tonight gives him 575, and I'm not a mathematical genius, but he needs 300 more wins. He's 50 years of age. If he can coach another 12 years at the numbers he's been averaging, he definitely can get those. I think Dean Smith will catch him first, Dick. Yeah, Dean has a great chance. He's up about the 730. Oh, there's the back door cut. Cheney walks. Oh, he's fouled before he walked. Go to their man. Crunch time. Little CT. Crunch time, Mr. Cheney. Well, that'll take care of it. It makes it 87 to 74. Nice backdoor cut. The hand is for Todd Lindeman, the freshman from Channing, Michigan, who will come in. There's Todd a point. Leary will come in for the first time. Little 45 degree angle, up and under move. Meeks gets a nice hand as he leaves. Eric Anderson will come out. Larry played in high school with Eric Montross. They won the high school state championship together over in Indianapolis. Polinka comes back in from Michigan. They think Lindemann eventually is going to be a good player. It just hasn't played against a lot of competition. Cheney said seven out of ten from the line tonight. The number nine all-time scorer in Indiana history, only a junior. Their last loss was against Kentucky. Coming up next, with one of my favorite guys, the Monster Mash, Jamal Mashburn. 88-74. Cheney gets the big hand as he leaves with 20. He's playing better and better, Mike. Yes, he is. Play like the guy that finished last year. There's no doubt to me that he can be the special player. He can be the guy that can take him to that next level. Tally kicks it outside for the three-point shot. Polinka will keep it alive. Follow. Didn't get the roll. Bailey. O'Leary oh, had a deuce. He's going to say, Damon, I was wide open. I could have got on the scoreboard. Fouled by Kirk Taylor look, look. with 12 seconds to go. Look, at David knows it. He's going to apologize. He's going to apologize. He knows he didn't get it to his buddy. Kirk Taylor is first personal. Free throws again. Tremendous difference. Indiana has made 32. Michigan has only tried 16, even though they have shot brilliantly from the line. Two to one in terms of made versus attempts. Pretty it's good always at been part of their game. Hey, I'm pretty good at math. Will you compliment me, buddy? No, Dick, two to one is not hard. Hey, they <laughs> no. gave us another we pizza. We have to go. We have to at least get the logarithms before. Hey, they gave us another pizza here. They delivered another pizza. It's unbelievable. You going to eat it? No, thanks. I'm watching my cholesterol. I've had, I had plenty at halftime. 12 <laughs> seconds to go. Damon Bailey will get a hand as Chris Reynolds checks back in. Bailey getting better and better, starting to put points on the board on a regular basis now. This is the seventh consecutive game that he's had a big game offensively. Tally with a miss. Here's the steal. And they can't get the final shot off. So Indiana wins it, 89 to 74 over the Fab Five of Michigan for Dick Vitale. This is Mike Patrick. Thanks for watching. Let's join Tim Brando. Tim.